Right, thank you for coming. I sound a bit loud, don't I? Um, <laughs> uh, so, Benit, hi, how are you? Are you all right? <laughs> okay, lovely to see you all. I'm going to chat particularly about satin stitch today um, and looking mostly at corners and circles and how to get really good results. Whoops, I'm going to kiss it again <laughs> with both. Uh, sorry, can't hear me now, can you? Can't see where it is. Down. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we need, a, we need a mirror so we can see what we're doing, but anyway. Okay, so um, I do work on a Benina 700 series sewing machine, not this one, but uh, this is a beautiful machine because it's the 125th anniversary machine, so it's gold. So you're golden if you get one of these things, okay? Um, and I, I, I know my students know this, but I don't ever recommend anything that I don't genuinely believe in. I do think these are just wonderful machines. And one of the things that I think is the best about Benina sewing machines is that the design of the feet is so good. You've always got really good visibility at the needle point and you can always feed your fabric in and it just really, really helps you. And often there'll be a choice of two or possibly even three feet for doing a similar operation so that you can find one that really works for you. Um, so um, just before I move on to the um, satin stitch, which is the main focus of my talk, um, I just wanted to show you foot number 2A, which is a little overlocking foot but it's also great for um, zigzag. How many of you um, do zigzag on a single thickness of fabric? And you do your zigzag, and because of the horizontal throw of the stitch, it sucks everything in, doesn't it? Now, with the number two foot, there is a little pin that the stitch is formed over. So the stitch physically can't get pulled in, and then the stitch slides off the back of the pin. And so if I just sew a little bit on this little bit of fabric and a single thickness, you will see the difference. And you may have that machine, uh, sorry, that foot with your sewing machine. It used to, years ago, it used to come as a standard um, foot. Uh, and um, and then you'll know what to do with it, which would be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> so um, I tend always to put the needle down into the work first so that I get it exactly where I want it. Now, there isn't a lever on the back of this foot, um, sorry, this machine. I can either press a button or I can nudge the knee lift to drop the foot. So I'm just going to sew down that single thickness, and you will see, so she, here we go, that the stitch doesn't get sucked all together because I've got that nice pin on the foot. So can you see that, ladies and gents, how the stitch isn't getting pulled in tightly? Say yes, Philippa. <laughs> yeah, you do have to talk to me. I mean, otherwise, I feel like I'm in a vacuum here. It's just me. So it's a really, really useful foot for anything where you want to do nice neat edging, overlocking, anything like that. It's a great foot to use. So 2A is that foot. Right, now then, um, what can I tell you about what I've got? So my setup is I would have something like bottom line in the bobbin of the sewing machine. That is designed as a bobbin thread. I do use it for other things as well, but um, it's a fine polyester thread. So it's very fine. It doesn't have any lint. It's got a really nice stretch to it. It is one of my most favorite threads, and it's going to work really beautifully for satin stitch. You need a fine thread, because if you do satin stitch, which basically is just a very tight zigzag stitch, isn't it, yeah? If you use a cotton thread or a thick thread or something that's not fine, the stitches, individual stitches, can of hold apart. Can you see how that would work? And if you've got a really soft um, um, and a softer sort of elastic glossy thread, you'll get lovely coverage on the top and lovely coverage underneath. So bottom line is 68 polyester in the, in the bobbin and a nice shiny 48 polyester in the top of the sewing machine. I, I think that if you're trying to do beautiful satin stitch with a cotton thread, you just don't get really good results because the thread doesn't all blend together. Um, now, I have got here a satin stitch foot, and it is an open toe satin stitch foot, so there's no metal bar across it, and even a plastic one with a bar across reduces your visibility, doesn't it? So open toe is great. You know it's a satin stitch foot because there's a little groove cut away. I don't know whether you can see that, but there's a little cut away groove on the underside. If you try to do very dense satin stitch just with a regular zigzag foot, it will often stick. You'll have had that, won't you, where it sticks under the foot. And probably because you've got the wrong foot, you need to have the, the proper satin stitch foot. So um, that's important. 
Now, when I'm doing ordinary straight stitch sewing, I would be sewing with a straight stitch plate, but clearly I can't use that on this, can I? Because I would break a needle. But um, one of the really nice things about this sewing machine is that you can tell it which stitch plate it's got on. And if I tell it that I've got the straight stitch plate on, it will not allow me to go to a zigzag, so I'm never, ever, ever going to break a needle again, okay? So, um, but the theory is that you change your needle after every eight hours of sewing, and we never do that, do we? So, you know, a broken needle is always the opportunity for a, um, a new uh, needle. So change your needles more often than you would normally do. Now then, I have got a nine millimeter feed dog machine here, so, which means that my um, satin stitch can be as wide as nine millimeter so really really wide or can have it really narrow so it is just about personal preference I'll put it on quite wide so that you can see that um, and you'll forgive me if my tension's not quite right um, I haven't actually had a chance to check all of that which I would do normally so it's a very I'm going to do a very wide satin stitch so the zigzag is set wide but the stitch length must be set very short to get that really good satin stitch coverage so I don't know what I'm going to set it at until I actually start to sew so if I was making a quill or whatever I was going to be doing, put it on a garment, anything, I would always do a little test first. And it isn't sufficient just to pick up a double folded piece of fabric and put that under your sewing machine. You need to put all the layers that you would be working with. And I think as much as the exact same fabric because things react differently. So I've got a little sample here with um, some shapes fused onto it. So some, some corners, so I can show you corners, and some circles. So I've got my background fabric. I've used steam seam, but it can be any adhesive product. And then I've got another fabric fused on top. Need to fuse it really, really well so that the edges are not gonna flip up. But in addition to that, I'm going to use tear away stabilizer. You need another stabilizer. And you know, there's nothing to say that your satin stitch has to be done just on your quilt top. You could do it through all of the wadding and everything, because that would give give you stability, wouldn't it? Um, and tearaway stabilizer, you get all kinds of, of types on the market, but this is a really nice one because it tears really well in all directions. Some are more paper-like that only tear in one direction. I have both for different things. Um, this comes on a roll this deep, so it is known as elephant's loo paper. Okay, um, and I, I'm actually going to fold it so that I'm going to have two thicknesses of this underneath my my fabric. So if I was tr setting up, you know, setting off and um, working out how many layers, what I needed, and so on, then I would be exact same layers as I would have in a quilt. Also, I think with satin stitch, it matters that um, you don't have your satin stitch motive too close to the edge of the background fabric because you need some stability. Otherwise, it all kind of sucks in. And also, don't get a really small piece of tearaway stabilizer. Have plenty going um, beyond the edge because, again, that will really help to stabilize it. Now then, any questions so far? Uh, it's a 20, it's a 20C, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, oh, it's something like Starlight or something like that. Um, I think that's the name, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I always say this, when I'm doing a talk, once my husband came with me when I was doing a, an evening presentation, a talk, and at the start of it, I said, if you've got any questions during the talk, don't hesitate to ask me. Well, nobody asked me anything, and my husband got up at the end, and he said, Philippa, I'm not surprised nobody asked you a question. You do not shut up the whole time. So, But do ask me questions as, uh, um, you know, as much as you can get a question in. Um, I do use really fine needles. So I, if I was working at home, I would have a 60 microtex needle and I use that for everything for piecing for applique all of my quilting absolutely everything doesn't matter how big the quilt is the finer the needle the more likely it is to go between the fibers of the weave without damaging a thread those of you that have sewn with batiks will have damaged you've seen that little damaged thread every time you take a stitch a microtex needle will um, do the, the best job of that. But also, the, the blade of the needle, that's the long bit of the needle, won't hog onto the fabric and push it down and pull it up. And so you get better quality stitching. Okay, now then, the other thing to say with satin stitches, and those of you that have done satin stitch, you've probably done satin stitch where you can see the little dot of the, the, the bobbin thread coming up at the side. If you've got one of the old style Beninas with the case with the little finger with the hole in it, if you thread your bobbin thread through that little finger, it'll tighten the satin stitch and it'll 
pull the bottom thread tighter and then the coverage on the top will be better. Do you see how that's going to work? This machine doesn't have that, so um, I can loosen my top tension. So um, um, when I tell it to do satin stitch, it does automatically loosen the tension anyway, but I might need to go further. I don't know that yet. So the needle is going to go down in the right-hand side of the shape, but it is going into the background, but right on the background. Yeah, so into the background, but um, on the edge of the shape. So I'm not trying to sort of get the stitching in the middle of the edge of my shape. It is right onto the shape. Um, and normally I would just have a nice long tail and I would show I was holding both thread tails and I would have the same colour top and bottom. I've actually got white in the bottom, but um, not to worry for this. So can you see what a fantastic wide satin stitch that is? Um, it's going to come through the machine in a minute. Yeah, um, I do tend not to rush any of my stitching and I think the faster you go, the more... Uh, the less kind of accurate, accu accurate, can't speak, sorry. And now I'm going to just tighten that up a little bit more and make that an even denser satin stitch. Um, I haven't actually got bottom line in the um, bobbin of this particular sewing machine. So um, the stitching isn't coming as quite as close together as it would because I've got a slightly different thread than I would normally choose to use. Can you see the lovely width on that? Yeah. Okay, and always, always, always your needle down function so that every time you stop sewing, the needle goes down into your work. Now, normally, when you're doing a corner on satin stitch, you come all the way down to the bottom outside corner, you turn the work and you pivot, and then you cross over that last bit of stitching with your first bit of the new line of stitching, and you get a double bit of stitching at the corner, which can be really lumpy. So I'm going to give you an alternative to that. So I'm going to sew down to the bottom, but instead of finishing with my needle on the right hand side, and I often use the balance wheel um, to do this. So I've got my, I've got, you've got an option of a hover on this sewing machine, which lifts and lowers the um, presser foot every time you stop sewing. Um, I, with, with the type of work that I like to do, I've disengaged the hover. Um, so I wouldn't be getting that little bit of lifting. Now I have finished with the needle on the left hand side, yeah? So I'm going to turn the work. I don't need to lift the presser foot. I'm just turning the work. Now, if I started to sew now, it would just sew into the background, wouldn't it? So I'm going to manually turn the balance wheel, and the needle will jump over. But I'm going to keep turning, keep turning, keep turning, keep turning, until the needle's just a few millimeters from the surface of the fabric. And then I can lift my presser foot, and then can nudge that over and drop it down into the hole that I've just come out of. Can you see that? I'm going to go, go, go even tighter with that. And so now when I start sewing, it should be really buttered up. Now the reason that I kept turning that wheel so that the needle was almost ready to go back into the fabric was that I find that's a really good thing to do just generally with all your sewing. Get the needle right down or get the needle close because I've got the longest line of thread I can get running through the fabric and it doesn't have to take thread up and it's less likely to kind of snarl and go wrong. Can you see that? So when you're setting and off sewing, don't just put the needle a little bit down, put it right down so you've got a long line of thread going through um, and you should um, really help to stop any snarling up and um, things going wrong because the machine could just go without having to drag some thread. So just get, I know it takes a little bit of time, doesn't it? Just get going with that. Um, and I'll take it out in a minute. Now then, because my bottom tension is tight, I want to be really careful taking the work out of the sewing machine. So as soon as I can get hold of it, I pinch the stitching top and bottom so that I don't gather up the bobbin thread. Can you see how that would work? Because if you just yank it out of the sewing machine, it will gather up, so I've got a little loop there. Um, it will gather up the bobbin thread and then you will distort the quality of your satin stitch. So um, I know I haven't set that quite properly in terms of the tension, but can you see, can you see that on the screen? Because I'm not sure what, yeah, that you've got a lovely butted up corner instead of that double stitch corner. So I'm going to give you um, another alternative to that, but I'm going to reduce the width of the satin stitch to make life faster so that you're not watching that huge long stitch go. So I'm now going to about half of what I had which is 4.5 mil now my needle is on the wrong side for positioning so if I just turn the balance wheel do you see how it jumped over to the other side and then I can get to where I want to be 
Can I answer any questions? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. Okay, and so, how are you, Sheila? Are you all right? Yeah, the, the, I never have time to put my nail varnish on, so I've got a 20-minute um, journey from a hotel here. So I get in the car, put my seatbelt on, get the engine started, get the map out, paint my fingernails, set off really carefully, and after 20 minutes, but it, because I start the first day with only one coat, it gets chipped, so there's four days here, four coats, and it's not looking its best, so thank you for saying that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's always, the only time I ever manage to keep nail polish on is when I'm not at home because I'm always gardening and all the rest of it. So now this time I'm going to go down and I'm going to leave an empty corner. So what I need to know is the width of my satin stitch because the width of my satin stitch is how far from the bottom edge of the shape I need to stop. Yeah, does that make sense to you? So, and I still need to stop with... I wish I could disengage that hover, sorry. Yeah, um, that I still need to stop with my needle on the left-hand side. Now then, I'm not sure if you can see this, but if you can you see on the screen the background fabric at the side of the shape there? It's important information, because if I test this and turn it to have background visible, and I think that and I, I maybe need to go a little bit further. Can you see that? So that's that's what I'm looking at. So again, just a little bit of practice. And I do often just use the wheel to turn the stitch. So I'm hopeful because I'm demonstrating that that is going to go. And if it doesn't, yay. Can you see that? Okay, so. Okay, so now I'm going to set off again. And some of you um, who don't like to use the knee lift system, which I absolutely love, will really like the hover. Um, and so it is just your personal preference. I prefer to use the knee lift to the hover, but you've got the option with this machine, so it's up to you. So yeah, I would take the hover off for, for the type of work that I do. So again, I'm not going to go all the way with that, but just pinch it and take it out of the sewing machine and then put that again. Can you see? Can you see that? Okay, so I've got my tension a little bit better there, haven't I? Because I've got a really lovely coverage, and that is to do with thread. So you could leave that empty corner. You could fill it in with another colour with satin stitch. You could put a little bit of handwork over it. You could sew a sequin or a bead or something like that on it. So both of those are really nice options to the, the to the double. So anything I can answer on that bit? Go on, ask me a question. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You need to ask the banana people. <laughs> well, I have always done it. I've always done it. And I, I had old 1260s and 1130s, which were the early generation computerized. And I had those machines and worked on them for 20 plus years. And I always did it. And it never seemed to. I want the control. I just want the control. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and normally, I always work with the sewing machine at the highest speed, but I take the shoe, I work with my um, right foot for pressing the foot control. I take my shoe off, you've got more control. I mean, I, I teach all over the world and in all kinds of shows and things, and when I'm teaching the show, I get to teach on all kinds of different sewing machines. So I do get to see different sewing machines and get to really work with them and feel them. The press of foot with the bananas is very gentle, isn't it? You know, you can really regulate your, your speed with, your, with, the, with the foot control, whereas some machines, you press, don't you, and there's nothing, 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 and then suddenly it goes. Well, that's a big disadvantage, isn't it, when you want to do really detailed work. So um, it, there are lots of things you need to consider when you you know you're looking for new machines and you've got you know you've got some serious money to spend. <laughs> yeah, okay, right now then I'm going to show you a circle and I'm just going to draw something. I did have a pen somewhere which I've lost. Here it is, lovely. Thank you. Can can you see this or not? This piece of paper or not? Is it too hard to see? Okay, I'll hold it up now. Um, I'm going to satin stitch a circle. And what you need to do when you're satin stitching a circle is you need to pivot often because if you don't, if you sew stitching without pivoting, you'll get a kind of 50p looking thing, won't you, rather than a lovely circle. So if you could imagine that the length of the stitch was the radius, i.e. half the circle, 
Uh, it isn't, but just pretend it is. Every stitch would have to drop into the center, wouldn't it, in order for it to radiate uh, around the shape nicely. So, um, although we're not... Okay, so nobody's going with the left for my quilt, okay. <laughs> right, okay, so I've just jumped the needle over to the right-hand side in the same way that I did with the previous little thing that I showed you. Now, you might find that you need to alter the stitch length setting slightly for a circle because it was very tight, wasn't it, particularly on that last little bit. And if I'm pivoting, I'm going to be crossing over a little bit of a stitch every so often, aren't I? And it might stick because it's too dense. So I, I actually, my stitch length is on 0.1. So I'm just going to lengthen it slightly to 0.15 in order that it doesn't stick. So the needle is going to go in on the right-hand side. And again, I've got my two layers of stabilizer underneath that. Now, again, when I showed you the last little thing, I was looking at the fabric in the background there. Yeah, can you see that? You do want to be taking note of that as you're sewing this, because if you're sewing and you've got a kind of wedge shape or an angle there, you're not heading off around the circle, are you heading out of the circle? So can you see that it's a little bit of a sort of straight line of background that I can see there? Um, and that's, a, that's what I'm going to be keeping my eye on, as well as the edge of the shape. So I'm probably only going to do about eight or ten stitches. What I mean is, I'm on the outside, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine or ten. I always pivot on the outside. If you pivot on the inside, you'll have a little wedge-shaped gap in your satin stitch. So you're, you're counting and doing it carefully and always pivoting on the outside. Okay, and because I've got the knee lift, a little, a little pivot, just adjusting it slightly. So, um, really, really s slow kind of movement. So, if I had disengaged the hover, the foot would not be lifting like that. And it, but you do really need that needle down function to keep it all in place so that it doesn't, it doesn't move. The smaller the circle, the more often you will be, go down, the more often you will be um, pivoting. So the bigger the circle, the less often you will need to pivot. Okay, so it's quite a slow process. Somebody said to me um, when I did this demonstration on Thursday, why don't I use that little circle, um, little uh, accessory that you can get? And I didn't really have an answer for that. <laughs> I just like to make life hard, really. I just love stitch, and I just love sort of not overcomplicating it with loads of stuff, you know. You, you, and really, I use straight stitch and zigzag and a bit of buttonhole and satin stitch and just maybe odd other stitches every so often. But really, um, you don't need to have a multitude of embroidery stitches to do really good work. Um, there is a new 500 um, series machine, I think it's the 570, that has the same screen and bobbin as this one, and um, that's also a lovely, another really lovely option. Just think these 700s are just to die for. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, I'm just going to do a little bit more, and then I'm going to take it out of the sewing machine, um, because you don't want to watch me do a whole circle. Okay, so again, just easing it out and holding on to the thread so that you don't drag it in. So if I put that there, can you see what a lovely, beautiful satin stitch I'm getting there? It's looking really, really nice. Now, I want to just show you, um, do, uh, don't stay if you've got the, you know, money to spend, please, <laughs> unless you're going to spend it here. Um, uh, just let me show you a little um, thing that you can do. Um, I'm just going to um, change to a quarter inch foot. Um, this is my kind of default foot. I use it for all garment making and everything. It's just a great foot. It's got really good visibility. It's really delicate, but it holds the work really nice and securely. Um, also, little thing about using um, adhesives is that I do think if you work quite slowly, your needle doesn't get as hot and you tend not to gum your needle up as much as you um, do with um, your really fast work. I put a triple stitch on and I'm going to...
the 30, oh, it's this, sorry, just a minute. Um, sorry, I actually prefer the 37, which is the one without the guide. This is a 57 that has the guide, um, but it, it, again, it's personal preference. I've put a triple stitch on, which is a straight stitch that goes one, two, three, one, two, three. Now, if you have a machine that doesn't do a fantastic satin stitch, or sometimes if you've used um, quite a coarsely woven fabric, and I can see that it's happened on here, that the satin stitch can jump over one of the threads in the fabric, and it makes the edge of the satin stitch a little bit jagged. You can use a, um, a triple stitch in the same thread to neaten up the edge, and it gives you a fantastic effect. So my kind of take on all of this is, don't unpick it, you know, don't take it out if it, oops, sorry, um, it's because I've got that hover on. Don't take it out, um, just think of what you can do to actually really, really improve it. Um, so the, the triple stitch is going to tidy up the edge. Now, um, what I will have to do on this is when I get to turn the corner, I'll have to manually make that triple stitch work, which I would do either by turning the balance wheel or looking at this, the amount of um, fabric I, I need to cover and altering the stitch length so that it would come exactly there. Okay, so um, I won't do that now, but I just wanted to show you how nicely, and you do that on both sides, but can you see how nicely that tidies up the edge? Yeah. So you put that on both sides in the same color thread or in an alternative color or contrast, something like that, you really tidy up the edge. So, how are you? Are you all right? <laughs> yeah, I do. Yes, I am. Yeah, just into the background. Okay. So, um, yeah. Well, it can do. Um, this is if the foot's got a D on it, it'll work with the dual feed. Yeah, but I didn't engage the dual feed, but you could do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, which maybe was why it did that little jump actually, because I hadn't engaged it. Yeah. yeah. Oops. Um, any other questions that I can answer, ladies? How are you? Are you all right? 